Angkor Wat is 1.6 km or about 1 mile from the south gate of Angkor Phom City, the main entrance, and is the most impressive temple in the Angkor Wat archaeological park. The park itself is roughly the size of a Manhattan in New York. Although temples in the park date back from the 9th to the 14th century, Angkor Wat Temple was constructed during the first half of the 12th century, around 1120 to 1152, by King Suryavana II. The base of the temple is 330 meters long and 255 meters wide, or 1089 feet long by 841 feet wide. An outer wall spanning an impressive 1.5 kilometers, just under a mile long and 1.3 kilometers, 0.8 miles wide, surrounds the temple complex. The complex can cover the flight decks of more than 100 aircraft carriers. This outer wall is further surrounded by a 190 meter or 623 feet wide moat that's the size of a channel from the shore to shore. The main entrance to the temple grounds is on the western end by means of a 12 meter or 39 feet wide and 190 meter or 623 feet wide bridge that crosses the moat. Lions and Naga snakes guard the start of a bridge. The temple has many smaller library buildings that surround it as well as an inner and outer courtyard. The central temple has multiple levels with five large towers on the top level. The central shrine on the top level is 65 meters high as tall as a Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Indian mythology dominates Angkor Wat due to the trade with India. The monsoon winds blew the Indian traders ships from India to Asia where they mingled with the local Khmer people for around six months while they waited for the trade winds to reverse direction. During the annual six months mingle a lot of Indian beliefs and traditions were integrated into the Khmer culture. Angkor Wat Temple is believed to represent Mount Meru, the center of the world in Hindu cosmology and the Indian home of the gods and is believed to be the mythical place somewhere north of the Himalayas. The temple's five sanctuary towers represent the peak of the sacred mountains, or the mount around the temple represents the ocean that surrounds Mount Meru. The towers imitate the shape of a closed lotus blossom. Intricate bas reliefs spanning almost 600 meters 2,600 feet depict scenes from epic Ramayana and Bahabharata battles and events from the Khmer history. Most of these bas reliefs were covered in a thin layer of gold with a red background. The most famous and arguably the most fascinating bas relief is of the turning of a sea of milk, where the gods and demons work together to generate an elixir of life. There are also 1,796 Asparta dancers carved into the stone all around Angkor Wat. They represent the earthly version of a cosmic Aspartas or nymphs. Each one is unique in looks, style and dress. They are fought have been modeled from actual court dancers at the temple. The temple is unlike other Angkor temples in orientation facing west and dedicated to Vishnu where other temples face east and are dedicated to Shiva. Some believe the west facing was that the temple served as a funerary temple as the setting sun symbolizes the end of a cycle of life. Some evidence to back this up was found in the temple. Surprisingly, Angkor Wat temple itself was not built to pray in. It was the home of Vishnu and his lesser gods. All the corridors are space for the minor gods of the India that come from the main god. The steps that one now take to the top shrine were once barred to only the holiest of priests, who were the caretakers of the place as well as the god. The king prayed here to Vishnu. The priest anointed the clothes to the statues inside Angkor Wat. The main shrine on the top is smaller than most people's living room, yet even today is seen as extremely holy. The libraries around the temple ground were once filled with ancient manuscripts made from palm leaves. These holy books were the greatest treasures the Buddhist monasteries had and were used to teach new monks. Angkor Wat also contains numerous carved Sanskrit inscriptions giving a record of Angkor Wat's past, battles, everyday life, as well as a list of kings are recorded in the inscriptions. To date, over 1,200 Sanskrits have been translated at Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat Temple took around 32 years to build and as an architectural wonder, just clearing the area of trees with machetes and axes was an enormous task. Only Salisbury Cathedral was built in the same time span as Angkor Wat, most other cathedrals of the time took 200 to 300 years to build and they are significantly smaller than Angkor Wat. The temple is in fact floating on an artificial island with a massive surrounding moat, providing water to keep the temple floating in the dry season. This ingenious setup allows the complex to be at ground level without the need to build on a mount as the larger temples. 
temples built directly on the ground eventually crumble to pieces. In the heavy monsoon rain season, the ground expands when being waterlogged. During the dry season, the ground dries and contracts again. This constant cycle of expansion and contraction eventually causes temples not built on a mount to collapse. There are 1532 columns in Angkor Wat, each weighing around 2 tons. However, the friction of the stones is not enough to keep the temple in place. Cambodians used the knowledge of woodworking and how shapes interlock to make grooves and locks to allow the stones to interlock into each other. Interestingly, builders did not use the common method of using a keystone arc, but rather used cobbling. With cobbling, builders place a block, then another block on top of it, but slightly off center. They kept on placing blocks off center until the archway connected at the top. According to modern architects, this method should not work on the scale of Angkor Wat. Yet, Angkor Wat is the largest stone temple in the world and still standing. Because Angkor Wat was to be a sacred temple, it had to be built on pure ground. The sand at the building site had to be excavated down several meters. This sand would later be used in filling for the several layers of Angkor Wat temple. Walls of interlocking blocks kept the sand from sliding down. The buttresses alongside the steps leading up on each layer of Angkor Wat helps the terraces and stone walls not to give in to the weight of the sand. Records in bas reliefs at Bayon Temple show how they built Angkor. Hundreds of thousands of workers from all over the kingdom were brought in for the project. It is estimated that it took around 5,000 workers just to dig the moat around Angkor Wat. Both the inside and outside walls of the moat are lined with sandstone to keep the water in. Once the site was excavated, a thick layer of blessed sand was used to fill the site. A layer of rocks was used to top the sand layer and a finer layer of fine sand was placed over a rock layer. The fine layer of sand was compacted and leveled and then and priests came and asked the gods to bless the site and temple. Priests dipped cords into colored powder and lay them down in patterns. The cords were then picked up and dropped so that colored mandala patterns were made on the ground. These patterns represent heaven and symbolically the priest bound the gods to the site to ensure the gods blessings on the temple. Two offerings were then placed at the center of the temple. Two white sapphire stones that represented the moon and two gold leaves that signify the sun. The engineers erected an 89 feet tall shaft over the buried offerings that leads through the temple to the sacred central chamber above. The temple was erected around the shaft in layers with terraces stacked on top of one another. The second and third level is twice as high as the first. Completed, the structure weighs thousands of tons. The top of the shaft was guarded by a statue of Vishnu, which was later replaced by an image of Buddha that is said to remain to this day. It is thought to be the one holding both hands up. The sand and silt that were removed from a moat alone are estimated to be 5 million cubic meters, around 200,000 dump trucks. This sand was used with the excavated sand for the temple to fill the terraces that are contained by stone walls. The cliffs of the rivers of the Holy Kulin Mountain, 30 kilometers away, were the source of the rocks used for the temple. It is estimated that workers needed to transport around 300 to 400 blocks of stone, weighing 3 to 12 tons each per day for 32 years. Workers used chisels to transfer stone and then inserted wooden wedges. The wedges were then drenched with water, causing them to expand and split the stone. Holes were made in the stone so that wooden pegs could be inserted. This allowed workers to maneuver the blocks. Anchor was built using laterite, a rock formation normally consisting of iron, aluminum and quartz. It is believed that the rocks were placed on barges and then pulled by animals on the banks to the temple site. Animals used were possibly elephants and water buffaloes. At the site, blocks were shaped by grinding them over each other. This process creates a perfect flat contact for the entire surface of a stone and is called abrasion. The laterite was covered by a layer of sandstone. The sandstone layer allowed carvers to carve intricate bas reliefs. In only a few millimeters of sandstone at places, multiple depths of field were carved. Experts believe that the carvings took almost half the time of building the temple itself. To speed up the process, master carvers would outline the design and then junior carvers would complete the carving by following the outline. For the bas-relief carvings, when done, it was covered in a layer of gold or paint. 
The temple as you see it now was not as it was. The outer walkway pillars were thought to have been white from a lime covering. The roof lintels and inner wooden doors were gold covered. The inner pillars were red with gold trim. The five towers are thought to have been totally covered in gold. The roof stones may have been white or very light blue. Even the floor may have been white. Because 88% of the year's rainfall fall during the monsoon season of only a few months, Angkor Wat had to have drainage systems in place. The outside of the passages have interlocking roof stones that have channels cut into them. These channels allow water to be channeled away before it seeps through the roof and floor and floods the passages. Interestingly, although the temple was dedicated to Vishnu, the faces at Angkor Wat is that of Suryavana II. Like the temples at Egypt, Angkor Wat had to be completed before Suryavana died to allow him to join the gods. There is evidence that construction was hurried on parts of the temple and at places not all decorations were completed. According to tradition, the king would have been cremated and his ashes placed in a stone casket in the temple. Such a casket was found at Angkor Wat, but at the wrong place. The casket could have been moved when Champa, Vietnam, invaders sacked Angkor Wat. The invaders made off with the entire royal dance court and they became the start of traditional Asia dancing. Interestingly, Thai fighting and much of the Thai cooking also originated from Cambodia. Although the Cambodians eventually drove the invaders out and defeated them on the Tongle Sap Lake, Angkor Wat was mostly abandoned as a royal temple. Although others visited the temple over the years, it was brought to the world's attention in 1860 by the illustrations of French naturalist and explorer Henri Mahot. On an expedition to Cambodia, 500 years of jungle was painstakingly removed and damaged sections repaired. Today, Angkor Wat features on the Cambodian national flag and is a major pull for tourists to Cambodia. There was a legend that under Angkor Wat was a massive royal treasure. Access was thought to have been through the central shaft. In the 1930s, Marshall and George Trouvé investigated the main shaft. For eight months they dug into the shaft but was hampered by monsoon rains. The shaft constantly filled up with water. They eventually managed to get pumps to the temple and drained the water. One day in 1934, just after dawn, workers came to work Treve. Excitedly he followed them to the shaft. The men had dug up the stone box containing the gold leaves and sapphire offerings to Vishnu. Treve was warned not to remove the sacred objects but ignored it. He mysteriously died a few months later in 1935. The sapphire stones and gold leaves disappeared to this day. When visiting Angkor Wat, do remember to wear long pants and shirts that cover your shoulders and no headgear is allowed in the inner sanction of Angkor Wat. For more information about Angkor Wat, including a walkthrough of a temple and information on the bas reliefs found in the temple, see my books in the description below. If you are interested in visiting other parts of Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnam or Laos, see my other travel books in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also share it with your friends. And remember to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of new videos as I release them.